Hi everyone, uh, we are live for our tea loaf uh, workshop this afternoon. Uh, hopefully our signal won't be too affected by the weather. Uh, I know a couple of weeks ago um, it played a bit of havoc. Uh, I don't know where you are but we have got lots of rain outside but we are going to warm ourselves up today with a lovely tea loaf recipe. So if you're joining us please uh, feel free to say hi, let us know if it's your first time here or whether you've done other workshops, uh, feel free to do shout outs. Uh, this makes it fun when we hear from you. Behind the camera, we've got Mr. Booty Baker who will be uh, calling out your questions to me. Obviously, I can't see what you're typing, but he'll let me know um, and we'll answer as many as your questions and have a bit of fun today with our tea loaf recipe. So we've got Janie, Jill and Claire all saying hello. Hi. We'll wait for everyone to log on and catch up. We have just put on a link to uh, the Facebook page on the event details, so hopefully uh, for anyone that struggled in the past to find us, uh, it'll just give them a prompt uh, to come here uh, onto the Facebook page. Uh, Julie's with us, but only has plain flour. Okay, that's fine. Just uh, get, your, get your baking powder at the ready. Um, Actually, do I have my baking powder at the ready? I can't remember if I do. I don't think I do. Sorry. Almost organised, not quite. <laughs> Can you just... Mr. Boozy Baker, because I'm disorganised today. Oh, and the camera's going already. Sorry. Could you um, have a quick check on the ingredients list as to how much baking powder I recommended for today's um, <laughs> event? Uh, if you have just joined us, it's a great opportunity right now to go and wash your hands uh, whilst we wait for everyone else to log on. It's, well, it's just turn two, I think, so we'll give people a few minutes. I swear I'm normally more organised. I'm mean, not too bad. Just there tends to be one thing that I've left to last minute. Okay, so we've got plenty of people joining us. We've got Karen, who's a repeat offender. <laughs> we've got Rona, Diane. Christina, Doing time with boozy bakers. <laughs> Christina's from Ipswich. We've got Debbie back again. Hiya. Yeah. <laughs> lost the kids this week. Oh no, it's a shame when that happens. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Wendy in Grimsby, Deborah and Paul. Excellent, Louise hi. from Chertsey. Hi. Annette from Whitstable. Nigel on his uh, narrowboat. Oh, Nigel on his narrowboat. Hi, Nigel. <laughs> Uh, I'm getting to know some of your names now because you send me your photos uh, each week. I'm getting to know uh, who you are a bit more. It's lovely. So, yeah, if I look this way, it's because Mr. Boozy Bakers is not quite behind the camera and I, I tend to look sideways at him. So we've got Kerry and Joe, their first timers. Joe's got oh, two hi, Kerry Joe. ready to go. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, Louise saying, can she use orange juice instead of tea? Yeah, make sure it's hot though. Uh, Maureen asking... I do hot orange squash to be honest, uh, because you need it to be hot, like boiling hot. Maureen was asking, is demerara or golden caster sugar better? Um, we are using caster sugar, but if you want to use demerara then you can, it's no problem. Uh, Laura said, do we need baking powder? I only saw self-raising flour. Oh, that's alright then, fine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that, because I was thinking, hmm, I don't think I'd put that on. No, you don't need baking powder, self raising is fine, but you do need it if you're using plain flour. So thank you for that, that saved us searching. I'm just looking at my list, and I always have my little prompt sheet just in case, I'm thinking, it's not on there. <laughs> uh, Catherine from Shrewsbury says, hopes that's gin and not water. <sighs> it is water today. It should be gin, but it's not. So I'll, I'll turn it magically into gin later. Gina back for more after last week's Cinnamon Bun workshop. Yeah. Uh, my daughter Tara. We had so many of your photos in for Cinnamon Buns. It was brilliant. So I know a lot of people have made those during the week. Um, and I've, we've had some Cinnamon Bun boxes being sent out still. Remember, they are still online. So if you do want to make them again or uh, for a first time, you can still buy the ingredients if you need it. We've got Laura back in from Norfolk, Arabella oh, yeah. baking by herself, age 10. Oh, well done. Uh, Kim looking forward to their cake on Monday. Excellent. So, um, 
If you did last week, it was quite technical. Cinnamon buns was always going to be a bit of a harder one. This is a little bit more chilled out. It's quite perfect for today. Uh, it's uh, a nice kind of homely, serve it with a cup of tea. It's perfect for a Saturday afternoon. Um, now, I've already weighed out some of my ingredients, but I'm going to give you a bit of time to be able to weigh it out as we go along. Um, anything that you need to know, just keep the questions coming and we'll keep answering them. Um, I know a lot of you have started, well, might have asked already, uh, but the oven is 180 or 160 fan. Um, and if you could help us by doing a thumbs up emoji when you've completed a step, that would really help to make sure that we're going at the right speed for you guys. So, having assumed you've all washed your hands, if you want to preheat the oven now, you can. It's at 180 or 160 for fan. Um, Mr. Boozy Baker's doing nice gestures, which I don't know what it means. Oh yes, if you would like to put our oven on, that would be helpful. <laughs> so, communication of sign language is not helping today. Um, so whilst I wait for him to just uh, get our oven on, I told you we weren't quite organised today, but we're nearly there. Right, so have we got any questions there whilst you were doing the oven? Uh, yep, yeah, Dawn's already getting a stage ahead. How many tea bags and how much hot water? Okay, right. So uh, you are going to need 300 ml of hot water. So our kettle just boiled before we press live, uh, so ours is measured out. Um, so if you've got the kettle boiled already, uh, brilliant, pour in 300 ml of hot water um, and then I'm going to add three tea bags. And the reason I'm going to add three tea bags is because I want a nice strong tea. I'm going to move that out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so whilst you're all doing that, don't worry, there's no massive rush. I'm going to just start mixing um, because I want a nice strong tea to go in our tea loaf. Um, if you, were, if you are doing a nice pot of tea one day and you happen to have half a pot of tea left over, you can use that stewed tea to make a tea loaf. It's just, obviously that's not where we're starting from today, so we've got to make it um, quite quickly. You could leave this to soak for ages, but again, for the purpose of the workshop, um, we don't want to leave it, we've got to do it quite promptly. So three tea bags uh, and a bit of stirring is going to in, um, make sure we've got a nice strong tea uh, to use. You can use any kind of tea you want. Uh, this is just uh, Tetley tea, uh, but if you want to use Earl Grey or anything uh, different, um, no problem, go ahead. Getting a question about some of the ingredients. Uh, Christine's asking, can I pop some walnuts in? Yeah, you can. Uh, so we're using sultanas for our dried fruit today um, and we've got uh, 280 grams of sultanas. You can use any kind of dried fruit you want that is going to absorb uh, the tea. So I wouldn't say glazed cherries are going to be great for that, but if you want to add a few anyway, it won't hurt. Um, if you want to add nuts, no problem at all. Um, I would say about... 30, 30 grams of nuts, something like that, uh, would do the trick. Uh, Diane's only got ginger or cinnamon, is that okay for the spice? Yeah, no problem at all. So the spice is just the flavour, so it, use what you prefer, or use a half and half, that would be quite nice. At the end of the day, a mixed spice is just uh, a combination of a number of them, so uh, yeah. Uh, a couple of questions about gas mark, gas mark four. Oh, thank you, Mr. Boozy Baker. So once you've got your 300 ml of uh, hot water, you add your tea bags, and all I've done is create a really strong tea very instantly. So if you have a thumbs up when you've managed that, that would be really good. Now, there's a couple of people that um, ordered some tea loaf kits, and I've written a method which you may or may not be following along. Um, there's only one that we've mixed together, the sugar and the spice for you later, but I'll come to that. So hopefully this is just nice and easy to match along with everyone else who's got their own ingredients. Um, right, now, uh, what's a, sorry. Can we add crystallised ginger? Yes, you can. So um, once you've got your hot tea and your tea bags, 
Um, we've got the Sultanas here, which is 280, or any dried fruit you like. So if you want to use crystallised ginger, that would be lovely, that will go nicely. Anything that's dried is going to soak up the hot tea. Um, so you can use dates, um, sultanas, um, raisins, mixed fruit, dried mixed fruit, uh, and you can use um, the nuts if you want to use nuts, just, just a handful, no more. Have we got any more questions? Um, just checking how much water, so it's 300 So 300 ml. ml of hot water, and I've put three tea bags in there just to get a nice strong tea straight away. And I've got 280 ml of sultanas. Um, I've, just, you're, I've just gone for plain sultanas and ours. If you want to add different ones, that's going to make it unique to you. Go for it. So dried dates, uh, raisins, um, yeah, put your nuts in. That's no problem. Just anything you want. 280. Mr. Boozy Bakers, you all right there? Okay. Um, yeah, put it all in there. And then once you've got that weighed out, uh, we are going to tip the tea over the top. Now, if your tea bags stay in the jug, that's great. If they don't, just make sure you've got the tea bags out of that mix. You don't need those anymore. So I'll just tip the rest of mine in. So that's an empty jug now with my disused tea bags. Um, Gluten free flour, is that going to be yeah. okay? Yeah, that'll be fine. Um, and then I'm just going to leave that. I've done that quite quickly. I appreciate that I've jumped into that quite quickly, but we need the dried fruit to absorb as much of this tea as possible for the best flavor and the best texture. So I'm now going to talk and recap. So don't worry if you've not quite caught up with me um, because I'm gonna go slow now. So you had 300 ml of water. We've added the tea bags, given them a good stir, made a nice strong tea. And then we've weighed out 280 of dried fruit. Um, you don't have to put the nuts in yet at the moment, actually, if you've got something like that, because you don't need it to soak in. If you have, that's not a problem. But the key is, is to infuse your dried fruit and the hot tea together. So once you've got um, it, the dried fruit weighed out, and that's 280 grams, we're going to pour the hot tea over the top um, and discard the tea bags and that's that's all that's happened at the moment is that that fruit is just absorbing that hot tea so once you've got to that stage and all I'm doing is just giving it a stir um, is give me a, a like a thumbs up and let me know that you've uh, got to there Mary's asked can you use cold tea or do you need to reheat no I, I would be um, I would say use hot tea you can use cold tea if you're doing this over a long time and you're going to let it soak for ages, um, if you want it to work pretty quickly, I would use hot tea. And Helen's asked again for the temperature of the oven. So it's 180, 160 fan or gas mark four. Well done, Mr. Boozy Baker. So whilst that's happening, I don't know if we've got thumbs up or not yet. We have, excellent. Um, we are going to start greasing our loaf tin. I know this is a bit of, um, some of you have it, some of you don't. Um, you can have any metal or china loaf tin. I just happen to have uh, an oven-proof china one. Um, if you don't have a loaf tin, some you know the foil Indian takeaway tins, the lo um, that, that, that would do. Um, or you can use a round, uh, deep cake tin, around six inches or a square or round one, it doesn't matter, but about that kind of size. And if you're using something else, tell us. We'd love to hear what you're using. Uh, Leslie's asking, is all spice any good? Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> we actually bought all spice rather than ground spice and realised that we got the, the one that we weren't expecting. Um, you can. It's fine. Um, use it. It's, it'll give a diff slightly different flavour. I prefer ground spice, but all spice is no problem. Um, your loaf tin or whatever you're using, we just need to make sure it's greased. Uh, now, this is a fat-free recipe, um, so we're only using an egg. There's no butter going into this today, so if you are dairy intolerant, it's pretty good. 
Um, so to keep in line with that, I'm just going to grease the loaf tin with a bit of um, olive oil spray, but it can be any oil or margarine or butter. And we just want to um, grease the tin just to stop anything sticking. Yes, Mr. Booty Baker. What size loaf tin? This is a two pound loaf tin, as someone kindly informed me the other day when we did banana uh, loaf recipe. And is it okay to use silicon or glass loaf tins? Yes, yeah. As long as it's oven proof, it's fine. Uh, so all I'm doing is just spreading that oil around my loaf tin so it doesn't stick when we pour it in later. Gina's using the old-fashioned method of greasing and flouring the tin. I hope that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. So yeah, you can. Um, so you use grease first, and then you can um, sieve a bit of flour over that, um, and that will work. Um, or you might have got a droop mix. Uh, but So I've done a bit of olive oil on there, but any oil or any kind of um, edible grease is fine. And then, this isn't compulsory, uh, and I appreciate that I didn't put it on the list, um, but if you've got a bit of parchment or baking paper, if you do a thin uh, amount of it, just to cover the base, as I said, the greasing, you should be able to get this out of the tin anyway. But if you wanted to, just as an extra tip, you can place the strip in the bottom of the base and have these uh, little handles that I've made with the parchment paper so I can lift it out easily later. This is not compulsory. I just like to give you extra little bits to uh, use now or use another day. As you can see, the sides are still exposed. The fruit cake is, the tea loaf is going to uh, be against those and it still comes out fine. And to be honest, I could probably not use this and I could just tip it up and it would come out. But if you have it around and you want to try it, you can make a sling in your uh, loaf uh, tin. How are we doing? Shane says it's a great idea. Freya's asking about baking powder. How much? Um, if you're using self-raising, you don't need baking powder. If you're using plain, you're going to need a good teaspoon of it. Lots of thumbs up. Excellent. Mr. Boozy Bakers is into the sign language today and I think he thinks I understand him when I don't. Uh, <laughs> right, so I'm going to put the tin to one side. Um, I'm going to get myself a bowl and then we're going to weigh out, or I've already weighed out, sorry, um, 340 grams of self-raising flour. Um, if you haven't got self-raising flour you can use plain flour and just add a teaspoon of baking powder um, gluten-free should work fine as well we're not sieving this either so don't worry about that dawn's having a go at making the slingy thingy the slingy thingy i think i think it's a good name for it the slingy thingy i like to be technical as i'm sure you've realized in these workshops <laughs> we've got a few who've got ready made liners as well so yeah up. yeah fine um, whilst everyone's, are we on thumbs up or shall I just give people a bit of time? Are they weighing out the flour now though? Do you remind them how much flour? Yeah, no problem at all. It's 340 grams of self-raising flour. And we're not adding the spices yet, but how much spice do we need? It's a teaspoon. You can, now I don't know why I did it this way, because you can add the spice to the flour. I added it to the sugar, I think. Yeah, I did. Um, but you don't have to. To be honest, it's all going to go in in a minute anyway. So if you did buy a pack and you're wondering where the spice is, I've added it to your sugar content. Uh, if you didn't buy a pack, that won't make any sense at all, so just dis disregard. At the moment, all we've done is 340 grams of self-raising flour. So... James just asked, a bit late joining, can she watch from the beginning later? You can. The minute this is over, um, we will share so you can watch the pre-recorded video at any time you like. And then we also will add it to our YouTube channel, which is Boozy Bakers. Uh, the reason we've done this is because we can keep all our workshops in one place. And I found that trying to find the ingredients beforehand and things is easier on YouTube than it is on Facebook. So if you do want to have a go at it, um, we will add that uh, to our growing list of workshops on YouTube. 
Um, whilst I'm just waiting to make sure that everyone has got the flour, um, we've had a number of requests for the recipes uh, for these workshops. Um, I can now tell you that we are putting together a recipe book of these um, recipes. It's just being finalised um, and we will be adding a few extras as well. So I will give you more information as and when I have it and we hope it will be available on Amazon, Amazon, Amazon store, is that right? I'm still yeah, learning. Amazon Kindle store, Kindle store uh, shortly. So we will let you know when that's available. Uh, but I hope you love it because uh, it's been a labour of love and it includes lots of your lovely photos you've been sending in. Uh, so we will give you more information as we have it on the recipe book. Uh, Fred's got no sugar. He's using honey, OK? Yes, that's fine. Um, so to the flour, you want to add um, 100 grams. We're using caster sugar. If you want to use brown sugar, uh, then you can. Um, I'm going to disregard that because I don't need it. Um, so we've got 340 grams of self-raising flour and 100 grams of caster sugar or whatever sugar you want to put in it is fine. Uh, Ed said his internet is rubbish, you put the tea in the fruit, what next? Okay, so your tea's in the fruit, you need to weigh out 340 grams of self-raising flour um, and 100 grams of sugar. And grease your loaf tin. Thank you, and we've greased the loaf tin so it's ready to go. Uh, Daisy doesn't have ground or all spice, only cinnamon. Will yeah. that flavour go together with crushed yeah. ginger? Yeah, I think so. Um, you don't have to add the spice in, by the way. If you've already added the crystallised ginger and you're happy with that, just leave the spice out. Um, so I'm now going to add um, the teaspoon of uh, mixed spice. If you've got the box, this has already been added in your sugar. So if you've got the um, pre-done box that you've ordered from us, you don't need to worry about this. Uh, Mr Boozy Baker, I forgot my teaspoon. Could I have one, please? Yeah. Thank you. That's just one of our boxes, just wants to check the sugar and spice is mixed. Yes, yeah, so it's all been done for you, uh, so you don't need to worry about that bit. Right, so I'm putting a teaspoon of my ground mixed spice. You can use whatever, whatever you like, cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, um, all spice, ground spice, or just leave it out, it's not a problem. Uh, Debbie says, have I missed the egg? No, you haven't. You haven't missed the egg at all. Uh, so all we're doing is getting everything ready um, and then we're going to combine it all together. So Mr. Boozy Baker is looking panicked that there's no egg and it's in the ramekin dish. <laughs> so we've got all the dry ingredients. We've got our fruit, which I'm going to just give it a test, move it around. But that should be looking a little bit plumper with the hot tea there. Uh, so I'm just going to keep that soaking for as long as I can. You can do that and leave it overnight. Um, but again, for the purpose of the workshop, we're doing it all quite quickly. Freya, who's doing it with the honey, has asked when would she add the honey? Um, I would leave the honey for now um, and add it when we combine everything. And, and I don't know how much you're going to add, uh, it's preference I suppose, but I'd have said a good couple of um, big spoonfuls. Um, we're now going to get the egg. And we're going to beat it, um, ready to add. Now the reason we're beating it separately, rather than just cracking it into the mixture and stirring it in, is because this isn't going to be a thin batter that you can easily move around. This is going to be coating uh, the fruit, so we really need um, the egg to be mixed up before we add it. So I'm going to be a bit noisy, sorry. Michelle's doing that. Heather, who couldn't get on the start, was asking if the tea cold or hot. It was hot, Heather. We use hot tea uh, just to help infuse very quickly. Again, if you're doing this, you know, you've, you've had your supper, you've got half a pot of tea left over, you could use cold tea, pour it over the dried fruit and leave it overnight and it will do the same job. So I've got... Oh, I'm running out of room. I've got my flour, I've got my, can they see this or am I pointing too far? It's alright, I can bring it over. I've got my fruit, I've got my beaten egg and I've got my dried ingredients. Um, which has got the flour, the sugar and the ground spice. Was that a large or medium egg? Um, that was just a medium egg, about 60 grams of egg. 
If you give me some thumbs up, because I do appreciate that I've got mine weighed out. I know some of you have prepared beforehand with your weighing out of ingredients um, and others will be doing it as we go, which is perfectly fine. All good? Excellent. Right, so now we're going to just put it all together. Um, so because I want to be able to mix it all, I'm going to put it into a bigger bowl, which maybe I should have started off with to begin with. So in goes the fruit. Obviously, if you started off in a bigger bowl, you don't need to do this. There we go. So in goes my fruit. Uh, in goes all my dry ingredients. And my beaten egg. And now we're going to give that um, a good old stir up um, until it's all combined. You don't want to over mix this. I'm just moving it around the bowl. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's going to be really thick. Um, if you see, if you combine it and it's got a bit of fruit left, uh, sorry, not fruit, flour specks, don't worry about that. I'll show you mine. If I just scrape down and I'll show you, I can still see a bit of flour, but I'm not going to mix that anymore. I can see that it's nice and combined. Did you put all the excess tea in there as well? Yeah, so that's, so yeah, everything goes in. Uh, you're gonna need that liquid of the tea to make it. Um, so there you go. Can, you can see that it's still a bit, you can still see little bits of flour in there, but it is nicely combined. So that was all the water that was with the sultanas, all of that went in. Um, your flour, the sugar, um, and the mixed spice, all that dried ingredients, and the beaten egg. And then I've just given that a good com um, stir just to combine it, but then I've stopped because I don't want to over mix it. Are we all good with that? Why don't you want to overmix it? Um, because you want it to rise and, and I want it to be nice and loose. Um, so that's why I've just kept it. It's the same with muffins, actually. You never want to really overmix muffins when you make them. Um, so you won't see all that flour. It'll all sort itself out in the oven. Um, so uh, once you've done that, this is so simple compared to the cinnamon buns. Uh, you're going to love this. All you need to do is put it into your tin. It, as you can see, it's really quite a thick um, batter. It's a dense loaf. This is why it's a loaf, it's not a cake. Um, it is nice and dense. Smells amazing. We haven't had any shout outs today or anything. We've had, we've had people tell us where they are. Are you baking across households today? Helen's asking you add desiccated coconut. Yeah. Um, yeah, really, you can make it yours as much as you want. Just be aware that if you add a bit of the coconut, um, don't, don't add too much, or you might need to start taking out some of the flour just so that you haven't got too much dry ingredients. Helen says that we put the sugar in. Yeah, so you had your flour, your sugar, and your spices already in one bowl. You had your sultanas and your tea in another bowl and your beaten egg in the other. So we had three bowls. And then we've just combined it all together in the one big bowl and given it a stir up. Um, we've got Louise saying hers looks a bit wetter. Janice says hers looks a bit dry. Oh, um, it depends what your flour is, I suppose. If it looks a bit too wet, you could put a teaspoon um, or a tablespoon of uh, flour in, uh, depending on how wet it looks. Um, I, I wouldn't worry too much. You've got the ingredients in there that it will bake and it will become a sponge. It might just be a little less dense. If it's looking too dry, um, you could always add a bit more tea or a little bit of just water uh, to the mix, just to loosen it up a bit. Mine is very thick, very, very thick. So, um, Ed, who's that? A few issues today, I think, mm -hmm. with his internet connection. He said, "Do you drain the fruit?" No, you're going to need that water um, in your mix. So uh, no, put it all in. Once you've got the tea bags out, that that is all going to go into your uh, tea loaf. Don't put the tea bags in your tea loaf. 
Uh, Verity says, her daughter added the raisins to the flour. Do we need to start again? No. So oh, I see. So your daughter's put the raisins without the water um, or with the water. It's difficult to know. If you want to get back to me on that. Um, but even if she has, just put it all together. The, the worst that's going to happen is you're, you're not going to have the fruit soaking up so much of the tea before it's gone in, but it will still be a tea loaf. Don't worry. Uh, Claire has Keris with her, age three. Oh, well done. Baking with mum and grandma on FaceTime. Oh, that's lovely. We do like to hear from you over how you're baking, who you're baking with. Um, that is really as simple as it gets today, guys. Uh, once you've got it in the loaf tin, you bake it for an hour um, and it's done. So we're baking it at quite a low temperature because we want to bake it for a while. It's deep and we want it to make sure that it's well cooked. Um, but once you've done that and you've baked it for an hour, you are going to have to wait for it to cool because this is fruit that you are heating. So it's going to be really hot for a while. Uh, so let it leave it to cool and then just keep it covered. Uh, once it's cooled, just put some cling film or put it in a, um, a sealed container and that will last a good few days. Uh, we've got Georgia and Isla with us and they want to say happy birthday to their dad for Monday. Happy birthday for Monday. And Dawn's asked, can we lick the bowl? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> and Heather would like to make a shout out to her friend Anne from Bognor who's watching today. Oh, hi Heather. Hi Anne. I hope you like baking along with us. Um, we're happy to stay on. I mean, this can go in the oven. As soon as you've got it like that, it can go in the oven and it is gonna, it's going to make your kitchen smell amazing with all that fruit and spice. And on a day like today, it's, that's just what you need. And then have it later. You can slice it up and then you can spread a bit of butter on it or just have it as is whichever you prefer. Um, next week, we are whoopie pie making. Uh, we're making red velvet whoopie pies. Just so you know, um, you don't need to make them red. Um, it's in the name, but you don't actually need it. So if you are putting a shopping list together and you can't get hold of red gel or red food coloring, don't worry, you don't need to have it that color. Um, yes, it's cool and it looks great, uh, but you can always add it another time, uh, but it'll still make a very good um, uh, whoopie pie. So that's next week. And then we've got to come up with something for the Saturday before Father's Day. Uh, so if you have any suggestions, do let us know. Otherwise, we'll put something on and we'll keep doing these as long as you guys are enjoying them. We've got any questions? Uh, what oven temperature, please? So it's one <laughs> And do you smooth it down before going into the oven? So I've just, I didn't need to do much, but I've just used my spatula and I've just kind of pressed it into the corner, but you don't need to do much to it. It kind of just spreads itself out. Uh, Deborah's baking with her new puppy, Marvin, watching her. Oh, well, good luck with Marvin. He might like this. Well, don't let him eat it, by the way. I don't know if anyone knows this, but dogs uh, are uh, grapes and raisins. Um, if you're local, uh, we're still doing cream teas, even on rainy days. Um, we're making all of our cupcakes again. We've got loads of cocktail flavours out. Um, and if you are not local, which many of you aren't, well, there's lots of things on our online shop you can treat yourself to, from biscuits and brownies and cake slices and tray bakes with happy birthday on them. But we are working on something at the moment uh, for our online shop as well as local delivery, um, which we are just experimenting with. We made something last night. I'm going to sit down with Mr. Booty Baker later and do a taste test. Um, and then we hope to have something fun to add to our shop tomorrow. Uh, so look out for that, because uh, I think you'll like it. Susan's asked, when you finish, could you toast slices and bust them like a tea cake? I imagine you could actually, yeah. 
Uh, Just be more, careful it doesn't set fire if you put it in your toaster because it's uh, the, of the fruit content. Can you confirm the oven temperature and how long it needs to go in the oven? For? So 180 or 160 fan or gas mark four, and it's for an hour. Uh, Christine's using two tins. How long in the oven for that? Okay, so if you're going to do it, um, I would I would look at about 40 minutes. When it's done, um, it should. It should rise a little bit. It's not going to rise massively. It's a dense cake, but it should have a nice kind of uh, rounded top to it. Um, and you should be able to test it by getting a skewer. And if you've got like a kebab stick or something like that, put it through the cake and you should be able to draw it out and there won't be any sponge um, like, or dough or batter, not like your mix here, um, on the cake. Uh, so if you are making it in something different, uh, if it's shallower and it's spread over a bigger area or it's just smaller, uh, you probably want to look at about 40 minutes, I'd have said. But if, you're, if, if it's smelling done and it looks done, just get it out the oven a little bit and put something like a skewer inside, draw it out, uh, and if it comes out clean, the chances are it's cooked. If you're not sure, just give it a few more minutes. Any other questions? I uh, love for the idea of the um, recipe books. Excellent. Honestly, I spent so long on this until about midnight most nights, uh, making sure that uh, it looks right, it's well laid out, it's got a complete method to it, uh, and then beautiful, beautiful pictures. Uh, and it's it's lots of your your pictures, guys, um, and it, and we've accredited. Uh, all of the photos so if your photo is in the recipe book you will see your name in print um, and that will be on the Amazon uh, Kindle store uh, to purchase which I'm really excited by uh, so um, so we'll keep you up to date with that obviously uh, we want to add your photos from today um, and and we've got a few more that we'd like to add uh, to the recipe book particularly ones that you've requested but we haven't been able to do within a 40 minute workshop. So we, we are working really, really hard on our day to day celebration cakes, cupcakes, cream teas, online orders, workshops. Um, so the recipe books kind of like squeezed in there in the extra hours um, and then the, the homeschooling the kids. Um, so but we, we are on it. We're nearly finished. Uh, we're getting suggestions for bagels or donuts for Father's Day. Bagels or donuts. Oh, yeah, we've made donuts before, actually. I'll, I'll have to think about that one. Thank you. And a lot of thank yous for all these workshops. Very welcome. We have enjoyed it. The kids, I'm sure, will be back on it next week. They tend to uh, dip in and out as and what they're doing and what they're interested in. But I know Erin is quite excited about doing whoopie pies. Uh, we went to Disney World last year and uh, whoopie pies were like the feature of going to Epcot. Uh, we had to have a whoopie pie, so uh, she'll be on that because that's her favourite thing ever. Um, I know a few of you have struggled with ingredients for next week. I'm hoping uh, that a lot of you have resolved that you have got now an extra week. We can put together a recipe um, box again. We're just struggling with time to get it all together for you, uh, but we should be able to get something online. We'll work on that. Mr. Boozy Baker is nodding, um, so we'll try and get that on uh, by tomorrow, but it is a lot more wet ingredients, so there's still quite a bit to purchase. Um, if you can't get icing sugar, uh, I can show you how to make uh, a ganache to fill the whoopie pies instead. Uh, so let me know what you're struggling to get hold of um, and if I can I'll put some alternatives because that was what this was all about was working with what we had in the home and I know sometimes that's not been possible but where we can we want to be able that you can just use what you've got in the cupboards uh, and that you don't need too much specialist equipment um, and you can have a good time with it. Um, muffin trays with uh, eight lots of muffin trays of this how long would it take? Uh, okay so if you're going to put this into smaller amounts um, 20, 30 minutes at most, you're going to have to try it out, uh, I'm afraid. If they're little ones, like little loaf tins, I'd have said 20 minutes is probably enough, but um, I haven't tried it out myself, so I would personally, I would take them out after 20 minutes, I would give them a bit of a test, if they need a bit longer, put them in for another five, uh, until I was happy that they would risen and they were cooked all the way through. Any other questions, or are we all good? Do send us your photos, tell us how it's gone. Uh, we, we do love, we do sit um, with our loaf cake and eating 
and having our cup of tea afterwards and uh, we do love looking through your pictures so we're always very happy to receive those. You can either comment underneath this video or you can uh, message us and also, must say this now because it saves me quite a job, if you're happy for us to use your photo for any future publications, please do say that when you send them um, and then I, I, it just saves me having to uh, come back to them all and ask you uh, because we do like to have your permission uh, to use things. There's people who like, like the idea of knowing how to make ganache as well. Yeah, yeah, so we'll maybe do that as an option then next week as well. We did say you could use uh, white chocolate instead of cream cheese, but actually if you can't get hold of uh, icing sugar then I can add about a ganache in that uh, so you, but you are going to need quite a bit of white chocolate for that or dark chocolate or milk chocolate whichever you prefer um, and we can fill the middles with ganache. Apparently your mum's kitchen smells lovely. Oh uh, hi mum! <laughs> it actually has isn't in yet so I'm going to give that to Mr Boozy Baker to put in now but the scent I think on a day when it's miserable like it is and we can't really complain with all the hot weather we've had uh, but to have the smell of a baked fruit loaf in uh, is just such a home comfort. So uh, don't worry about the time, we'll put that on in a minute. Um, no, he's, he's doing it, he's putting the timer on. There we go, we're sorted. Uh, so yours are probably going to come out before ours. Anything else? Are we good? Um. A lot of people can't wait till about four o'clock when they're free. <laughs> but that's a great time to have a nice tea time treat. And yes, we will put out a picture of ours when it comes out as well. Yeah, yeah, we will do. So you've already got a picture of ours on uh, the event details. I've posted it. So that's the one that we made before this. Uh, but we'll put ours out again as well. So, all right. Well, that was a much shorter workshop than our usual weeks. Uh, next week, a little bit harder maybe, a bit more technical. Uh, but uh, you've shown me what you can do on the cinnamon buns so it's not going to be a problem uh, so enjoy the rest of your weekend you might find us coming online over the weekend to show you our new product but we've got to test it first and make sure we're happy with it um, and show us your pictures right I shall leave you to it thanks everyone <laughs>